The F-22 Raptor has its roots in the 1980s. The US Air Force devised a set of requirements then and in 1985 issued a request for design proposals, two of which reached the demonstrator stage in the year 1990. A year later, Lockheed's design won. The Cold War was over by then. Urgency was low, so it took until 1997 for the prototype to fly. An actual serial production followed a few years later. So, the Raptor is now 20 to 30 years old, based on design ideas that are perhaps even older. Yet, it's still considered by most to be the best jet fighter in existence, even today. So, how does it stack up against its competitors in 2022? The F-22 is a cool plane, not really affordable to most, but our sponsor, Bespoke Post, has something both cool and affordable. What they do is send gift boxes on a monthly basis. For $45 you get a gift box tailored to you, based on the preference quiz you take. Every box has items inside worth roughly $70 in retail value. And there's a bunch of different boxes, items change every month. There's outdoor gear, barware, knives, food and so much more. Most products are from small businesses, many of which are US-based, like this barbecue rub in the carnivore box, made by the Great American Spice Company from Michigan. I like that whole box, actually. The cleaver looks just the right size. And the scorch box would be a great gift for this one friend I have, who always goes on about hot sauces he tried. Of course, you get to preview your box online after they assign one to you. Before it ships, you decide if you want to keep it, or if you don't like it, you can swap it for a different box or even skip a month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you keep. And if you want 20% off your first box, go to bespokepost.com slash binkof20 and enter the code binkof20 at checkout. Or just click the link in the description below. Bespoke Post is a gift that keeps on giving. Send someone some gifts or treat yourself. Back to our video. While there are many planes that could be compared with the F-22, we'll have to keep this video manageable. So we'll keep down the list to just a few planes. The Russian Su-57, the Chinese J-20 and the US's own F-35A. The latter choice is not so strange as its mere existence influenced the choice to cut F-22 production short. So we'll see just how much the F-35A is behind the Raptor and in which areas it beats it. The J-20 is an understandable choice as its numbers keep growing quickly. It's poised to outnumber the F-22 fleet in the near future. And it's going to remain the most cutting-edge Chinese fighter for some time to come. The Su-57 is only starting to get delivered to the Russian Air Force. It will take a few more years until it matures and reaches active service. Still, it's by far the best Russian plane. Important note, only the performance of the 2022 models is taken into account. Future upgrades, even if they're only a year away, are disregarded. This video will compare said planes in various areas. Acceleration and speed, maneuverability, range, weapons capability in air-to-air -air missions, various sensors and ancillary systems, and stealth, to the extent it can be assessed. Actually, as you can imagine, a lot of the points will need to be estimated. We're talking about new planes with often classified specifications. Starting with acceleration, for example. It's a product of installed thrust versus weight, of course, only uninstalled thrust figures are ever given for engines, so we'll have to use those as an approximation. The J-20 thrust figures are based on a range of engines available to the Chinese. To simplify, empty weights are estimated, rather than operational weights. But roughly speaking, the F-22 has the best thrust-to-weight ratio and might have the best acceleration in the subsonic regime, by a slim margin of around 5%. There is more to acceleration, like drag, Reports claim the F-35 has the most issues in the transonic range and high supersonic range due to its shape and layout, which impacts both top speed and acceleration. Maximum speed is a function of many factors, most of which aren't publicly available. The J-20 was cited to be in the Mach 2 class by the manufacturer, so using various claims allows for the creation of a rough table of comparison. It's important to also note that practical mission capabilities change when a plane is laden with fuel and weapons. Supercruise speed, or how fast the plane can go without ever using afterburners, was however publicly stated by the US Air Force, 
it's an impressive number that other planes don't come close to. Some planes, like the F-35A, can also maintain low supersonic speed without afterburners once they use them to get through the high drag transonic threshold. Maneuverability figures like turn rates are not really available for these new planes. A lift and installed thrust are factors in maneuverability, so wing area and uninstalled thrust can be very rough substitutions for those. There is a single official graph concerning the average roll rate for the F-22, comparing it with the F-15 and F-16. It's apparent that the F-22 is trailing behind the F-16 up to a certain angle of attack. Su-57, being aerodynamically even more advanced than the flanker, which in turn is better than the F-15 in the subsonic regime, should do quite well. The J-20 is allegedly optimized for supersonic performance, if a research paper of its chief designer is to be believed, so it might fall behind in the subsonic envelope. The F-35 is allegedly as good as the F-16 in the subsonic envelope, with better nose-pointing capability important in dogfights. It can enable planes to quickly point towards their enemy for short periods of time, even if their turn rate would otherwise not allow them to. But it's also not that crucial as planes today aren't expected to get to distances just a mile away, where nose-pointing ability could trump general turn rates. And various other factors, like technology found in missiles and helmet-mounted sights, further makes maneuverability somewhat less significant. For those craving some sort of an answer after all this, the Su-57 is likely the most maneuverable in subsonic flight, followed closely by the F-22. J-20 and F-22 might surpass the Sukhoi in supersonic performance. The F-35 would likely trail behind other planes a bit in subsonic envelope and fall behind a lot in supersonic one. Much more important for a modern-day fighter is range. It can enable the plane to perform missions that otherwise it could not, or it could reliably use supersonic speeds for long periods of time, or stay over the battle area for longer. Using the disclosed combat radius as a basis, ferry range can be estimated for US planes. Other planes require more general estimates using fuel loads. The J-20 in particular might have long legs due to its ample size and possibly large fuel volume, and its four external fuel tanks. The F-35 was never observed with external tanks in practice, and the F-22 never carried more than two tanks in practice. Now, range is also subject to payload and flight profile. The F-35, being smaller, will suffer a bit more range taken when loaded with the same weapons load compared to other planes. Air-to-air -air weapons payload can be internal only or can add missiles externally. It's clear the F-22 carries most missiles internally. When carrying several missiles externally, even the F-22 would have its radar signature spike up, almost to 1 meter squared levels, which would basically halve the enemy's radar range. The J-20 and Su-57 external missile loads are estimated from available imagery. The F-22 was never observed being ready for more than four externally carried AMRAMs. And the F-35's missile loadout is going to be limited for a few more years, until further modifications are added. Still, even here the F-22 comes out on top. Integration of the long-range R-37M missile for the Su-57 is likely not yet done, though it is planned. Likewise, the long-range Chinese missile is not likely integrated on the J-20 yet. US planes currently have no similar missile options. Capabilities-wise, the Russian missiles are somewhat behind the US or Chinese ones, especially the short-range R-74M missile. The US and Chinese missiles are, roughly speaking, of comparable technological levels. Sensors are among the most important subsystems a fighter jet has. Usually those are radars, missile approach warning sensors, various optical sensors, and sensors classifying enemy electronic emissions. There are also friend and foe identifiers, which are sometimes confused with actual radars in the wings of the Russian Su-57. The Sukhoi, however, does have more radars than any other plane in this comparison. In addition to the main frontal radar, it has two cheek radars, each roughly three to four times smaller. Some kind of emitter is also visible in the tail sting. That might be a radar, but it also might be a jammer array. Still, the Su-57 has enough radars for nearly complete situational awareness. All planes use active electronically scanned arrays. While various other technology factors are hard to quantify, two factors could be somewhat estimated – size and power of array. 
both of which influence array capability. The more, the better. The diameter of the radom usually helps assess radar array size. The J20's big nose may be hiding quite a large array. Another way of indirect capability measurement is counting the number of transmit and receive modules from photographs. The J20 radar was never shown, but similar technology is present in a known radar on JF-17 fighter, so the module count could be adjusted for radom size. Planes with lower thrust-to-weight ratio could, in theory, cause the radar to be designed around a lower input power level. If that holds some weight, then the F-22 would be on top of that list, with the Su-57 being a bit behind, and the other planes a bit behind the Sukhoi. The Su-57 would have trouble powering a few of its radars at once, though. Those side radars are thus likely to be effective only at short and medium ranges. Given that Russia is putting their first AESA radar in service only now, and that module density seems a bit lower, it would appear that Russian radar tech is somewhat behind that of the US and Chinese one. And that the Chinese radar tech, if it is somewhat behind the US one, is possibly compensating for that with a larger array. Optical infrared and ultraviolet sensors are distributed around all the planes. The F-35 is king here ahead of the F-22, with large aperture sensors capable of detecting even far away enemy planes. The J-20 has similar looking apertures to F-35 ones, but of unknown capability. Radar warning receivers are also present on all planes. It was alleged during their active service that the systems on the F-22 and F-35 are more sensitive and precise than electronic signal locators meant for wild weasel F-16s, meant for locating enemy SAM units. Russian and Chinese capabilities in that regard remain a mystery. When it comes to tracking close-by threats, the F-35 is likely the best of the bunch. All planes except the F-22 have a dedicated forward-looking infrared sensor as well something that can find and track targets visually from even longer ranges than the distributed aperture system on the F-35. In certain situations, and especially against radar stealthy opponents, that might be an advantage. Defensive measures are integral to survival. The F-35 is the only plane here that uses a towed decoy, which can lure missiles towards it. The Su-57 is the only one using a directed infrared countermeasure system, which blinds the seeker of infrared missiles with a laser beam. If an F-22 gets a missile on its tail, it may not have many options for evading it. Then there are radar jammers. Modern AESA radars can actually serve both as radars and jammers. The F-35 had that ability from the get-go, while the F-22's radar was upgraded to get said ability. Su-57's radar was also advertised with similar ability. But the Sukhoi also has dedicated jammer arrays, one of which is likely in the large tail sting of the plane, and the F-35's towed decoy may have jamming capability. There is no info on the J-20, but it's likely its radar can also jam, and some of the panels to its rear do look as if they might house additional jammer arrays. So the F-22 is likely not at the top of the pack in the jamming department. It's one area that might cost it in a battle, if it ever finds itself not supported by other plane types. What the F-22 does have, and the J-20 does not, is an internal gun. The Sukhoi and F-35A do have one. Another area useful for short-range combat, where the F-22 does not excel, is helmet-mounted display. All other planes on the list use it. It enables the pilot to fire its weapons even if the plane isn't directed straight at the target. It provides information to the pilot no matter where the pilot is looking at. Yet, due to a 20-year-old design requirements and subsequent cockpit design constraints, the F-22 to this day has not received a helmet-mounted display as a regular feature for its units. That shortcoming is somewhat compensated for by the fact the F-22's short-range missile, Sidewinder X Block II, can lock onto a target after its launch, so, as long as the Raptor's radar can track a target, the F-22 could still achieve some off-bore shots. Still, it's not an ideal solution, especially for short-range combat with lots of maneuvering. When it comes to overall information presentation and situational awareness, the F-35 likely cannot be beat. Systems in the F-22 aren't as well integrated to offer complete situational awareness, and there's more pilot workload. The F-22 might be somewhere in the middle of the bunch, 
when it comes to set capability. What the F-22 does have going for it is stealth. The two most important stealth aspects are infrared and radar stealth. When it comes to infrared signature, there is simply no contest. The Raptor is by far the most optimized there. Its nozzles are physically shielded from the view of infrared sensors. And like with most of the other planes, some sort of exhaust cooling is in place as well. But on top of everything, let's remember that the F-22 is the only plane in the bunch with tactically meaningful supercruise ability. It may not have to use its afterburners for most of the fight, while all other planes will likely use them to achieve good supersonic performance. Using afterburners increases the thermal signature of a plane by up to three times. The F-35 has some advanced exhaust cooling as well, and the J-20 has some of its tail surfaces positioned to also hide the exhaust from side view. But it's radar stealth that is make or break territory for most fighters today. Comparing other planes is hard as figures given officially do not come with context. And the Russian metric for giving out radar signature data is not the same as the US one. The Sukhoi's own research papers state a goal of 0.1 square meters. As context is missing and that may be a goal that's more than met, it could be that Su-57's radar signature is between two and three orders of magnitude worse than the F-22. What is apparent is that Su-57 uses less radar absorbing materials than the other planes. It seems to be using radar blockers in its inlets, which may be okay against short wavelength radars, but it's not as good of a solution as a long swiveling intake. Various details like the IRS T-ball near the cockpit also likely provide a spike in radar signature. Corroborating the idea that the Su-57 simply isn't designed to be as stealthy as US planes. The J-20 certainly goes a lot farther in that regard. Extensive use of radar absorbing coating is visible. Various protrusions on the plane are more meticulously designed for countering radar, as is the cockpit cover. Still, even the J-20 shape, when a simulation of radar returns is run on it, gives worse signature values than the F-22. Shown values are approximations of the shape and good radar absorbing materials might yield better values. But it's a baseline rough estimate, showing that the frontal view on the J-20 yields a radar return between 0.01 and 0.1 square meters, which is roughly an order of magnitude or two worse than what the F-22 and F-35 have. Simply comparing those figures to US Air Force announced figures back in the day is not advisable. There are surely many factors in play. For one, the F-35 signature was not precisely known back then. And since then, the US claimed that in certain conditions, the F-35 can have even slightly better radar signature than the F-22. But that's almost certainly for the frontal section alone. The shaping of the F-22 means the F-35 can't really compare when looked at from other angles. Still, the F-35 has newer radar absorbing coating technology. And that's one area which made great strides in the last 10 to 20 years. Today, even fairly thin layers of such materials can greatly lower the radar return. In a way, the F-22 is unlucky as its baked-in design means it can't profit from those technological advances the way the F-35 or even J-20 could. Overall, the F-22 might very well be the most stealthy of the bunch on average, but the F-35 is very close, and perhaps even against the J-20, the difference in radar signature may not be tactically decisive. So overall, the F-22 matches or betters its competitors in radar stealth. It has significant advantage in infrared stealth. It can more easily achieve higher speeds and acceleration, enabling it a more favorable position when entering the fight. Its radar is roughly as good as some of the competition though it falls behind all other planes in other means of detection. It's likely the Raptor would detect others before those detected in turn, and get to position itself favorably against other planes, though not significantly so when going against F-35 or J-20. If so, it might not get to shoot them down before those would get to fire their missiles. The Raptor's air-to-air -air payload is the most lethal one out there, when quality and number of missiles are taken into account. When defending from attacks, it possibly falls a little behind other planes due to less robust radar jamming options. It lacks more direct defense measures, too. The F-35 might survive a few more radar-guided missiles fired, 
and the Su-57 might survive a few more infrared-seeking missiles fired. But the Raptor is quite maneuverable, possibly second best of the planes analyzed, which could help it evade some extra missile shots. Though if it comes to very close combat, its lack of helmet-mounted sight would likely relegate it near the bottom of the list. Its relatively short range is perhaps the biggest downside to the Raptor, which could limit its tactical options and make it simply not as present on the battlefield, and also make it overly reliant on in-flight refueling. Of course, for air-to-ground missions, the Raptor is a mixed bag. Its stealth can allow it to do fixed-sight airstrikes and survive, but it's nearly hopeless in missions where it would have to look for ground targets on its own. Plus, its fairly shallow bomb bay and limited range would mean it's not going to be doing big bomb runs anyway. It's a machine forged for air superiority. It's still the best for that overall, but its edge is being eroded steadily. On one hand, all technologies and concepts are baked into it, making it hard to upgrade it. On the other hand, it's out of production and its small fleet and possibly even newer planes on the horizon mean there's little political will to inject money into serious modernization efforts. One should not be surprised if by 2030s some of these other planes get more capable variants that meet even the 2030 variant of the Raptor in quality and capability. The Raptor is still the top dog in 2022, but the sun has started to slowly, very slowly, set on it. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.